Alright, testing. Testing the new mic. Testing. Testing the new mic. How's that sound? Clear? Better than before? I fucking hope so. Hey, how you doing? I'm starting off my series reviews with Netflix's The Witcher. It's the story of Geralt of Rivia, a mutated monster hunter, struggling to find his destiny in a world where people are often more evil than the monsters he hunts. Right off the bat, the thing that caught me most off guard is probably the amount of exposition in episode one. It's packed with names, places, time periods, and a lot of stuff that happened in the past. After paying attention through the first few episodes and putting names to faces, pinpointing specific time plots, uh, it, I kind of I caught up fine. There was really no issue after that. I'll touch more on the time aspect that everyone I feel like kind of didn't enjoy um, towards the end of the video. But yeah, I think that's the only way I would compare it to Game of Thrones. When I first watched Game of Thrones, episode one, lists and lists of names and places and people and specific things that happened at this time and this place and it just threw me off guard immediately. Um, I will say though that <laughs> The Witchers is a lot more, not simple, but uh, orderly. I think it laid out the facts for the world that it was building better than Game of Thrones did in its first couple episodes. Dude, Henry Cavill transforms as Geralt of Rivia. I'm gonna mess up here and there saying Geralt and Geralt because I always assumed it was Geralt, but they said Geralt in the show, so just expect that. It's kind of amazing to see such a depthful and rich performance given by Cavill. Not that he hasn't before, but uh, I think for the role of Geralt, you really kind of have to become the person because there's so much history for that person. And he did a great job with little to no dialogue. I had read that he originally had more dialogue for the show, but showrunner Lauren Schmidt cut it down after seeing how well Henry kind of conveyed everything that Geralt had to say. I always think that if you can get something across in as few words or less uh, and have it be picked up on, that's the best way to go. Quick comparison, The Mandalorian. You don't see his face. He doesn't speak as often as everyone else fucking does in the show. And yet you kind of empathize with him through body language, through specific, you know, head movements. It, you don't really need that much to convey a lot in a show or in a movie or in a performance in general. I think it's also cool to find out how hard Henry was pushing <laughs> to get the role of Geralt. Um, it's rare to find an actor or an actress be as into not only the franchise, but like the performance as the fans would be. And coming as from someone who's never even, I never played any of the Witcher games and never read any of the books, um, it, this show, it make, his performance makes me want to read the books and makes me want to play the games because of how into it he is. Anya Chalotra, who plays Yennefer of Engerberg, brings the character to life, dude. You feel everything she's feeling from the start to the end. We don't fucking know. She literally started from the fucking bottom. Hunchback, crooked jaw. She was sold for four fucking marks. I don't know the conversion to US dollars, but that seems fucking low. Freya Allen's journey as Siri throughout the show uh, is really the story that ties everything together. And it's so full of, you know, suspense and, and pressure. Uh, I think it's a great kind of spine for the show. It really holds everything well together. The fight sequences are top fucking tier. I mean, they're like smooth without coming off as like a, a, a pre-practice dance. They're fucking hardcore. The, the, the blood and gore is my favorite. I'm a huge fan of uh, blood and gore when it's ridiculous and when it's useful and kind of helps uh, tell the story like in The Witcher. I had read that Henry Cavill declined using a stunt double, uh, which whoever, however true that might be, I'm sure there were times where he was like, no, I want to do it. And they were like, no, you're not going to do that shit. Either way, I think it made for a really cool viewing experience. Um, I'm a big fan of when an actor actually does the death-defying shit that they're doing. In the back of my head while I'm watching something like that, I'm flipping the fuck out. Seeing him perform all those feats as Geralt was really cool. All the sword play, all the death-defying stunts, the blowing through walls and floors. I think it really uh, made the viewing experience in general just a lot better. I think that my favorite aspect of the show has to be its use of magic uh, because it's so unique and, and fresh compared to how other shows or even some movies 
use magic in their worlds. I really like the formula of it all, the restrictions, the advancements, the fact that it's all kind of almost written into its own little constitution. It gives it some more elbow room. You know, there are other shows and movies that create rules for their magic. They never push beyond those, and there are some that have no rules, but you never really focus in on one piece and you kind of leave something out. Uh, this really kind of gave you a lot of wiggle room for what you can see, for what magic can do, for what it can't do. And uh, it's really fucking cool. Now, on to the time issue. I personally didn't find it an issue. Um, the time manipulation is one of the first of its kind for a TV show like this, to where, for where all these interlocking stories kind of culminate at the end. And I think they did it really well. I wasn't really too confused in the beginning due to the time. I was confused because of the pounds and pounds of exposition they were trying to help, you know, teach the audience about the world and the rules and all that shit. The time manipulation kind of pieced together over time. Time, 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 time. The show is full of hints and, and visuals and pieces of dialogue that kind of pave the way for how we as the audience figure out that everything is through a different time period and we're following these three people through their own specific time periods and if you pick up on that it's 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 done really really well and it there's kind of no issue there it made for a more interesting experience you know you're, you're watching a group of people deal with the ramifications of something that happened in the past and then you go to that moment in the past and you watch it happen and unless you're really fucking, I mean, you don't really have to be studying, but unless you're kind of paying attention, you can link those two moments together without there being a spoon going, here's the fucking plane, this happened here. But yeah, overall, as someone who's never read any of the books, played any of the games, is completely new to this franchise, um, I really, really like the show. I think that they did a great job of kind of enveloping you in this new world because it is different from other fantasy shows in some ways, and it's the same in some ways too. Um, but I think it's a very unique take on the entire genre. And I can't wait for season two when it comes out in two years. All right, make sure to like, subscribe, and tell me in the comments below what you thought of The Witcher. What did you like? What didn't you like? Um, I wanna hear it all. I'll see you next time. Pew, 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 pew.